Hello, everyone. Can you hear me on the mic? Or? Yeah. Okay, yeah. So it's very difficult, right? So uh, good afternoon, everyone. I guess when you came here, you didn't expect so many speakers at the same level. Yeah, so <laughs> but uh, this is going to be a little bit different than any other uh, talk that probably you attended today. Obviously, the, the title is Meet the Maintainers. And you can see uh, some of us here already lined up, you know, to, to, to participate in the discussion, take questions, and so on. And I see a few other maintainers sitting in the back, not uh, coming in. Hey, hey there. Can you guys see me? <laughs> so, <laughs> why are you hiding? <laughs> yeah, there are two. Yeah. So, yeah. so Fabio, Keith. Come on, join us. Pull up a chair. <laughs> and probably Kate as well should join us. You, you are the maintainer of the whole project, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, so, I mean, the idea behind this is, uh, so over, I think, a few years ago, two years ago or something, we introduced this, uh, uh, you know, the concept of uh, project roles, and we defined different roles in the project and how things, uh, you know, get managed, get maintained, how things get reviewed, how, how, how we, you know, all, all for the sake of making things more efficient and to move things uh, faster in terms of like contribu contributions being reviewed and merged and integrated in, you know, releases uh, as, as fast as possible. And uh, doing that, we introduce the roles, as I have said, uh, we have the maintainer role that collaborator role and, and, and also the contributor role. And that, like, different responsibilities and, and rights come with that. Uh, the whole idea is to, you know, uh, elevate or, or uh, help drive the, the maintenance and the development of areas in the project uh, and uh, make that uh, official and also offload uh, lots of the work that we have to do to, to get certain uh, uh, like code changes and introduction of new features uh, reviewed. Yeah, so that's why we, we, we try to, to follow this model where uh, for each subsystem we, we have a maintainer who is an expert in this area, has been involved in this area for a while, probably introduced this subsystem or this driver ABI into Zephyr and uh, is considered basically the, the last word in terms of like, you know, accepting changes or introducing new features into uh, the subsystem. Uh, obviously, as, as you can imagine, uh, over the years, uh, this, the, the areas in the project uh, have been growing rapidly. So I don't have statistics right now, but I would, I, I would say that we would have like an, a new area like every other week or something like that yeah and uh, the you know the, the 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 problem that we have that we we have been discussing also earlier this week is there's a lot of a lot of movements in the project Be, people you know come in introduce something and leave for another job or another opportunity and uh, you know, there, there, there is lack of maintainers in general for some key areas. Yeah, and uh, we wanted basically, you know, using this uh, opportunity here at the conference first, you know, to to introduce ourselves and uh, talk to you directly. And I assume, you know, some of you uh, have different levels of involvement with the in the project. Uh, so there obviously will be different uh, uh, interactions. We definitely don't want to go into, 
uh, architectural details or you know how you know why my PR was not approved or or, or things like that. Uh, but it I mean every topic is, is is fair game here in terms of we want to identify or know about pain points and, and problems that you might actually have as contributors or people who want to do something with the project, things that we can improve and, uh, and, and, and make uh, life easier for contributors and also for maintainers. So uh, that's basically the general idea. Uh, and we want to, in, in, the, the, the general uh, expectation here or the goal of this to, to, to make things better and to be able to scale with what we have in the project and how we have been doing the project, given that, as I said, we have new areas, uh, you know, every probably other week. We have lots of contributors, lots of, you know, lots of uh, 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 features, lots of changes coming in, and that needs to be managed somehow. And although we have many people here, uh, it's still not enough, you know, to drive or accelerate the development in the project. So with that said, I want actually first to go through the, the, the people seated here and uh, have them introduce themselves briefly, what area they are maintaining. Uh, so you are familiar, probably you already know, you know, some of us here. And then uh, I want like to ask general questions here to see, you know, uh, who is actually contributing here, who's interested in contributing, who's, you know, has general questions and so on, and, and that's where the interaction and, and the discussion can start, yeah? So without further ado, I would uh, hand to uh, Mahesh, who can introduce himself, yeah. Thanks, Anas. My name is uh, Mahesh Mahadevan, and uh, I'm from NXP. I uh, maintain and support uh, a lot of the things that is done at NXP. Uh, some of the drivers that we've added, uh, there's a lot of contributions from the community that come and we, we help review and merge that in. There's also a HAL that we have inside Zephyr that, is, that has a lot of the NXP code in it and we, we use con community contributions in that as well. So those are the two areas that, that I maintain under Zephyr. Uh, my name is Jan Legrasse. Um, I introduce and maintain the uh, SD subsystem in Zephyr. I'm Ryan Erickson uh, from Laird Connectivity, and I am the modem subsystem maintainer. Hi, everyone. I'm Vaishnav. I am working in the Linux development team at Texas Instruments. I step in as, stepped in as the TI platform and maintain as Prescriber. Chris Fried, POSIX API maintainer and FPGA maintainer. Talk a bit louder. I can't even hear. Yeah. Uh, Chris Fried, POSIX. API maintainer and FPGA maintainer, LTS2 release manager as well. <laughs> I'm Carlos from Nordic and I maintain Bluetooth, particularly HCI and documentation as well. Kumar Gala from Analog Devices. I've been involved with the project for a number of years, maintained ARM over the years, some other subsystems, but most more recently, kind of device tree. Well, I don't need that. Yeah. So, uh, Anas Nashif. Uh, I maintain a few systems. I had to go through my head again to to, uh, to remember what. Uh, so tracing the test framework, Twister, uh, some x86 related items, Extensa, you know, uh, uh, platforms uh, from Intel, and probably a few other things like where I'm collaborator. Yeah, but uh, this is. Uh, uh, the, the, this is exactly why we need to have this conversation, yeah, because as you can imagine, some of us here maintain like a few areas and we need to improve that. So that's, I'll hand over to Brix and you can introduce yourself. Here. Yeah, thank you. My name is uh, Brix. I'm with uh, Vestas Wind Systems. We do wind turbines um, using Zephyr. So I currently maintain the EEPROM drivers and, and the CAN control our network uh, subsystem and drivers in, in Zephyr. We've been using Zephyr for the last five years, so, and using CAN, of course. So any CAN-related questions, feel free. Hello, my name is Erwan Gouriou. I'm working from uh, for uh, STMicroelectronics. 
I'm a maintainer for uh, STEM32 subsystem, so uh, STEM32 drivers, um, boards, and uh, stock descriptions, and so on. Uh, I'm also a um, maintainer of the HL STEM32 module, and a uh, maintainer for the shields. Hi, uh, Johan Fischer uh, from Nordic. I'm EUSP maintainer, uh, drivers and subsystem, and Modbus maintainer. And I'm also looking at uh, USB device controller drivers, subtype. Hi, uh, Kevin Townsend with Linaro. I'm the maintainer for 32-bit ARM, uh, the trusted firmware M integration, and Zephyr Scientific Computing Library. Uh, hi, I'm Carlo Caglione. I work for Belibre. Uh, I maintain the ARM64 architecture port, the IPC service subsystem, uh, and a couple of other smaller APIs. Hi, I'm uh, Martin Jäger from the Libre Solar project and small company. And uh, I maintain and have originally introduced the uh, task watchdog and the DAC duck driver. And I'm also quite involved in uh, the CAN development or interested and uh, Laura one. Hi, I'm Fabio Baltieri. I work for Google and uh, I introduced and maintain the input subsystem and I also try to merge patches, but usually carless. <laughs> so, yeah. I'm uh, Keith Short, also from Google. I think the only place I'm actually a maintainer in the uh, uh, contributor file is for code style. Uh, but documentation, but I've been playing, uh, taking a larger role in defining what, are, what all the project roles uh, within Zephyr are and uh, doing things to uh, establish guidelines for both uh, reviewers and contributors in this effort to try to improve the velocity of the project. You're also the process working group? Yeah, I'm the uh, chair of the process working group. Yep. Um, but just took that over from Marty. Yep. So that's, that's only very recent. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you, everyone. So any mentors are still sitting uh, behind? Uh, I forgot to mention. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah. The, the, I mean, you came all the way from Australia, so I mean. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, Jordan Yates, I work for the CSIRO, which is Australia's national uh, research organization. So I'm apparently the maintainer of the uh, SeamSys DSP uh, subsystem. So that's uh, like machine learning sort of integration into embedded stuff. Yeah. Great, thank you. So let's, let's uh, yeah, go ahead. I forgot, I'm also the thrift maintainer. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot. I know we didn't go into like collaborator areas, but C, C++, uh, there's a bunch of them. You have to actually grep the file. I'm yeah, sorry. exactly. I forgot some of them. Okay, so now, now the, the question to the audience here, how many of you here have contributed actually to the Zephyr project? Uh, at least one batch, one PR. Okay, that, that's great. Okay, and how many of you have, are trying or plan to, you know, to contribute and trying basically to figure out what the hell that is and how this works? Okay, that's, that's also good, yeah. So, okay, so, I mean, let's start with the interaction here. At least uh, with uh, have the conversation with those who have contributed, uh, and and please, if you have a question, come forward and, and talk to the mic so everyone can hear you, and it's also being recorded. Uh, does anybody have any general comments about how the project is managing the contributions, uh, the project roles? How do you want to? Uh, do you, are you looking? for you know uh, uh, clarification or uh, do you think the way it is being done is, is good enough that satisfy your needs as a contributor uh, are there any is there any interest of, of people here to, to become maintainers and wondering how they be, how you become you know move the, up the ladder if you want from contributor to collaborator to maintainer please go ahead let's start yeah All right, so a few of you may know me, Dan Klauski from Ampere Computing. One of the things that we've noticed is uh, 
If we put up a PR that isn't exactly something the Zephyr community itself was going towards, and an example I can provide is the work we did on getting LTO to work. The discussion opened can, can up. Can you bet the, the what? Sorry. Link time optimization. Oh, uh, OK. Yeah. Sorry, okay. LTO yeah. is the short Yeah, yeah, yeah. OK. Yeah. Um, what we found is uh, you know, the Zephyr maintainers for the build system flat out came in and said, doesn't work. And that was the end of this, the discussion. We couldn't take that discussion any further, it seemed. When we tried engaging offline or out of, out of the PR, it just died at that point. Now, I have evidence it does work. We, we boot with it. So, you know, it, <laughs> I, I'm left at a point of how do we move forward with this? But it, it's not just like that MR or that PR, sorry. Uh, there are several other PRs where this has kind of happened, where people have renamed macros from having Z underscore to something else, right? That, that's an older one, but it seems to be a constant where there is a PR brought up. It doesn't follow exact mentality, and somebody basically says, no, not like this, but doesn't provide steps to move forward from there. And so how can we get those next steps from you as the maintainers to make this sort of thing happen? Okay. Carlos, do you want to answer the first one yeah, regarding uh, proposals? I don't know if I will be able to, but I'll certainly look into it. Um, okay. Yeah, I know. Well, Maybe I don't want to be specific to that. No, 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 not specific in general, right? Uh, so, just, I'll follow up with the LTO stuff, but, um, but outside of the, the context here. I think, I mean, the, the key thing here is um, how often does that happen? Because, um, you know, there will always be examples of um, PRs that went wrong. The question is, what's the frequency and with which frequency they appear? I think we need to strive to, because there will always be misunderstandings. Uh, that we're humans, so dealing between humans, there's always in, inaccuracies and, you know, feelings involved. So, um, uh, so to, answer, to answer your question, I think the, the, the the, the actual way to uh, get around this is escalation. Uh, so if you feel that the proposal you've made via a PR has not received the attention that it deserves, I think what, what needs to be done is a mechanism to escalate that. Because if the maintainer uh, has not uh, given it the time and effort it, it deserves, right, then, then, then you have to have a way. And we, we do have that to a certain extent. But I'm not sure if it's enough. So we have that. Uh, to what extent it's documented? And we, so we have uh, several things. Uh, the, 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 the first one that comes to mind is the dev review meeting on Thursdays. That's the, the first one. There's also the PR help channel on Discord. So I'm not saying it's a you know, uh, uh, perfect solution, but it definitely helps in many cases. Um, and then there's the TSC as well. Uh, TSC, anyone can join the TSC and you can ask for a topic to be added. Now, whether a, comp a, a particular PR would be discussed at the TSC or not, that's, uh, but, but, but really in order to have, because there will always be conflicts of way, one way or another, I think the, the only solution to that is have that, a mechanism to uh, object to, to that either behavior or you know, uh, opinion so that others can weigh in and then in the end take a decision together. No, Carlos, I think I handed that to you because you lead the architecture working group. And that's where general proposals sure. like this, I mean, yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. also another path that, I mean, there needs to be an RFC that you, you ask Carlos in this case to okay. schedule, you know, I mean, that's another path. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so the, the thing with the architecture working group, typically we don't, br we, sometimes we bring disagreements, but more often we bring uh, RFCs, potential, intro you know, new functionality in Zephyr yeah. that has been presented in the form of a, uh, a, a, of a request for comments plus a PR usually, and then we discuss that before. Now, in some cases, we also discuss particular um, PRs that are stuck for whatever reason, no, either, but, we, we don't typically discuss, what, what I want to say is that we don't typically discuss PRs that have been abandoned or, or that, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, that's more for dev review or for, uh, we, we, we typically deal with um, disagreements, disagreements and, you know, and uh, uh, approaches. We discuss approaches, is this approach, uh, you know, agreeable to everyone um, or here we have a fundamental disagreement that it's, you know, uh, that, that has been discussed up until two days ago and now I want to discuss it, that type of thing. So, but when you were saying no one, like, you know, uh, crickets type of thing, you know, and no one, no one's saying anything. That's not for, for the architecture working group. So, but yes, that's another tool, the architecture, yeah. Work, yet, yet another one. So, so you can escalate 
I think, in many different forums, and they're all valid. And, uh, you know, I, I think we could do a better job of documenting which, which is more adequate for each case. Yeah, so we, I think we recently did that in the, as part of the process working group of documenting, and, and I think Keith can probably talk a little bit more to this because I think it was, he, he was the one actually adding the docs to, for that. Um, you know, and some of this was related to, you know, sometimes towards that, uh, problem of, of like, you know, so there's a couple things, right? So there, one is sort of the, the gen general issue of, hey, you see this happening time and time again. And, and so I think, you know, the process working group is an area also that things don't, we don't typically, um, I think, mention and have community people, and it's open to everybody, but I think it's an opportunity to say, hey, I've seen this happen a couple of times. You know, is there something from a process perspective that we should try to be doing better, looking about, talking about to sort of see how the project functions that, you know, that if it's, if it's, you know, sometimes it's a case of, you know, maybe it's an overloaded maintainer, right? So that's just hard for someone to get, you know, responses because we don't have enough people in that subsystem. You know, I know the build systems one, it's a good example where, you know, I know Torsten for, from Nordic uh, is the maintainer for that. And there's a lot of stuff on his plate. Um, and so it takes a, sometimes a long time uh, for him to have the time and bandwidth to kind of go through everything to the level of detail that he'd want to. Um, and, and so that's one where we need more people involved in that subsystem to help with some of these type of issues. Um, so, you, so I think there's some different aspects to the kind of the problems to understand, you know, and, and sort of figuring out how we get feedback about the community, the community of maintainers to say, hey, you know, we're seeing this issue as a community of, uh, you know, we're not getting responses, right? And is that a maintainer? Is that, you know, different subsystems and so forth? So, you know, we don't obviously have some type of, you know, way of, of reviewing how maintainers are, you know, working today. Um, and so I think that's something that, you know, getting feedback from the community, like, you know, you, you raising um, is helpful because that's the only way we know how to, to try to address these issues. Keith, you want to say something regarding the expectations? And, oh. <laughs> I, well, the only thing that I was going to add is that, yeah, out of the process working group, uh, we came up with a new process of starting to triage PRs in the dev review meeting. And so that's, that's only been happening for maybe the last three months. Um, and right now, uh, we actually need a volunteer for the dev review meeting to start chairing the dev review meeting because uh, Maureen has yeah. right now left the project. So... Uh, so right now there's a gap there. So uh, so we're we're looking for volunteers. So yep. if anyone wants to help out with that, yep. that's kind of our next step. Um, just to comment to the second point about um, getting some feedback on your PR uh, and asking for changes, but maybe not being explicit about what those expectations or changes are. I, I'm definitely aware that happens. It's one of the difficulties in any up, busy upstream project is sort of getting those things merged in. Um, Generally, though, I, I would say that the, the first thing to try is just post a comment on the PR and say, can you, can you explicitly give me a sense of, okay, what precisely are you looking for? Often it's just that the maintainers have 40 fires to put out and a lot of us have day jobs as well that have other obligations. So I've definitely been in that position where I've got a complicated PR and, and, and things tend to fan out in five different directions and this guy wants this and this girl wants this. But sometimes maybe just a ping to say, can you can you be a bit more explicit and precise about um, what you'd like to see? And if that doesn't go somewhere, then get on Discord or get on one of the calls or ask for it to be added to the agenda. But sometimes just that ping because people forget about it or they, they put a comment and they assume you can read your mind, their mind, but obviously things don't work like that in the real world. So sometimes just an extra ping to, to get those next steps. Um, and I see this a lot, especially with newer uh, c contributors who just struggle with something like Git, like someone's going to say, oh, you need to rebase this on top of uh, the, the latest changes. That's, that's, that's a significant learning curve for a lot of people. And I think we have good documentation on that, but you have to know it exists. You have to know where to find it. And sometimes us as maintainers or some of just the, the, the people in the community, we could be a bit more helpful also maybe just being explicit with those steps like, okay, can you rebase? And if you haven't done it before, look here or here are the two or three Git commands. Because I think we forget how steep the learning curve is with, with, with Git and a complex, yeah. fast-moving uh, repository like this. Yeah, I mean, one comment here. Uh, 
So with, with regard to the first, the first question, uh, Daniel, I think, I mean, this specific case where you introduce a change or anybody introduces a change and you have tested that it works, you are not making stuff up, you know, you are sure it works, right? Somebody tells you, like the maintainer in this case, or a reviewer tells you that doesn't work. You know, obviously, I mean, there is, there is, there is so, somebody, somebody is wrong here. And that's where, you know, the discussion need to continue. And I mean, without even going into escalation, that's where a technical discussion, because the, the maintainer might actually not be aware or they might try it and did it wrong or whatever, right? I mean, there, that's where, but it shouldn't stop there, right? I mean, it shouldn't, I mean, the maintainer can say it doesn't work and case closed, BR, you know, stay, become stale and it doesn't go. There has to be some interaction. And I am not sure exactly where that stopped in this case, yeah? Because that, I, I see that happening in many, in, in many pull requests where there is this interaction that, you know, even the maintainer doesn't know because there, there, there is a limit to that. To, that to, the, to the second point, I think one thing that we need to, to have also in our, I think we have that in, in our uh, documentation for the project roles, is that if, if a maintainer or any reviewer for that matter asks for something or gives you a minus one, they have to provide a reason, you know? If somebody dismisses a review, they have to provide a reason. There is, I mean, nobody, I mean, you can't just go and do a minus one on a pull request and, and just leave the pull request without giving an explanation why you are doing that, yeah? I see people adding a DNM, do not merge, you know, because, you know, they, they don't, I mean, you have to provide a reason, right? I'm, I'm not saying to you, to whoever actually reviews your, your request, they have to provide a reason. And if they don't, they are not doing what they are supposed to be as a maintainer. So there, are, there is probably a, a, a problem of maybe we have, I, I need to check, we need to make sure that it is covered in the responsibilities of the maintainer or the reviewer in this case. And we need to make sure actually that all of us here and those who are not present here, that they are aware of their responsibilities. I know we published that, we put that in the documentation, but like many other things, you know, a lot of things just go into the documentation and nobody sees them, you know? I mean, not everyone just goes through the documentation every time they are updated. So we as a project, I think we need, we need to make sure every maintainer is aware of their responsibilities uh, uh, and, 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 and rights in this case and uh, document also the expectation in the review. Yeah. Okay. So, so what advice do you have for newcomers trying to have their first pull request accepted? We are working on sound open firmware and uh, at some point we had to do some work in, in Zephyr, but we noticed that uh, it takes a lot for our pull request to be accepted. Luckily, we are at NNXP and uh, David helped us a lot, but for a newcomer that it, it isn't backed by a company, um, what, what, what advice do you have? Okay, okay, so I, I'll, I'll start. I mean, we can go to others if they want to add. I mean, we have, I think, a, a very good getting started guide. I am say, I'm saying that now, you know, it, it's not like I follow that or I go and, and make sure it works every time we change it, etc. but it has been evolving over time. It went through a lot of iterations and, and we have people actually go and, and test that from time to on different environments to make sure it works, especially when, when it comes to setting up environment and so on, right? And uh, so, so we, have, we have some documentation. Right now, actually, uh, something that we added recently, Benjamin, uh, with, you know, our uh, uh, community advocate, uh, developer advocate, uh, uh, actually added uh, like a, a, a CI or GitHub action type of uh, uh, automatic response to newcomers where it actually, at, at, at right now it welcomes and there's a link. Uh, we actually talked about that uh, yesterday in the TAC. We want to expand and add like, you know, all of the important links in this welcome message so people know exactly where to go and, and look. And I think if, if people follow, if new contributors follow 
these guidelines, they should go far away with their contributions. There will be always issues, and that's where our CI start, tr tries to catch all of this, like commit messages, sign off, you know, code in style, and so on. And that's, I, I think, also by, uh, due to some recent changes that Carl is here introduced, where it actually shows you in the, in the, in the, in the, how do you, in the GitHub uh, code where the problems are, that actually helps a lot, you know, and, and there is, but, but then there is a limit. I mean, if, if you have never used Git before, I mean, that, that's, that's going to be a challenge, never mind what, yeah. So, oops, that's where we are. I just thought I would also add, um, I, if you are ever unsure of your PR, uh, whether or not it's ready, you can always submit it in draft mode. And I'd be more than happy to provide some feedback on the initial draft of the PR before it's marked as ready. And I'm, I'm sure that any of the maintainers are fine to do that now and then. And also open up Discord. We're all on Discord pretty regularly and there are multiple channels. So if you have a PR that's targeting a specific area, you can ask the people that are involved in that area. Does this look okay? It's in draft, is it ready to publish? And so on and so forth. <laughs> There's so many. Exactly. Yeah, and, and I think that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So just just to, to add to that, so entering Discord, I, I realize now that that's a problem, the channel jungle we have. I think we have to do something about that. I, I agree. But uh, the problem is when you're in and you've been in for a while, you don't realize because you don't know them all by heart. But the, the, the advice uh, for me uh, that I would give anyone is be, you know, persevere, persevere, you know, just don't give up. And in the sense that uh, but at the same time, obviously, you have to uh, leave some time before you hammer someone with the same question uh, multiple times because you have to wait for someone to respond. But the thing is, some people ask and then disappear, you know, and that really is not productive because you might, you know, you might be lucky, unlucky enough that you post a question on Discord or even on GitHub. And for whatever reason, the people who usually would, would have answered this kind of question were either absent or just they missed the notification, you know, that happens. So you have to ask again, maybe wait a week or three days, ask again, you know, and if really, really, really you cannot get it, then, then try another means like the mailing list. But uh, the point is we have, we have multiple ways of asking for help in Zephyr. And it's true that sometimes, you know, the, the requests, the questions fall through the cracks, but we have another, uh, yet another mechanism so you can use them all. Have you persevere while at the same time, you know, being careful not to, uh, to, to insist too much, I think that's, you, you, you'll get your PR in for sure. Yeah, and finally, you know, submit uh, an issue as a bug, you know, and, or, or the, I mean, again, as he said, as Carly said, there are so many ways to communicate. And maybe that's a problem because none of us can follow all of these. And that's something we need, like the Discord thing, I myself, I mean, I follow one or two, and people go in the different Discord channels and ask questions, unless they tag you directly, you don't see this, right? I mean, this is really too much, yeah? Yes. Yeah. Like Sorry? Like yeah, yeah, nobody can. And, day, and, and the problem is, there is like, I'm not really t uh, pointing at anyone here. If you ask a question like in general, because you, uh, people will start pointing you to other channels and that's where it get, gets lost because, okay, you pointed to this channel, which is very specific and, and but you know, it, it, it might actually be wrong or not everybody is monitoring that. And so there is, there is this, the, yeah, we need, we need to do something about it. Yeah, but this is too much management, and then you have to manage 60 channels and making sure that the right name is there, and you know, I mean, it, at, at this point, yeah, well, yeah, you can also use bots, but again, this, we are just making it more complicated, I think, yeah. Just file a bug, yeah, yeah. If we remove some of the channels, then people will complain that there's too much traffic in general, too specific. Why do I get spammed with a thousand rupees questions? So, that's the problem. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, it's hard. No single method. It's hard, and I, I think that's where you also need to think about. Okay, use use the GitHub issues. Yeah, I mean this is something that gets triaged, right? Yeah. 
So, I mean, if you actually have a problem, file, file an issue, right? Uh, I mean, the Discord probably we need to define. It's a discussion. It's not, it's not like for filing bugs, you know, and things like that. I mean, we need to come up with something. You want to say something? Yeah, no, just quickly maybe to echo the comment regarding starting with draft mode. Don't feel like the first PR has to be like hundreds of, of lines of code. You can make it like really, really small and, and take it from there, right? Like the, the, there's that too. We have a few uh, questions there, but also an answer if you want to answer. This. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I'll pass it to you as well. Yeah. I just want to add, yeah, I, I think I did. Really. Honestly, yeah. starting small is, is really good when you're a new contributor. You know, if you if you open a smaller PR, I've seen it happen. Like someone who is a completely new contributor open a small PR, you did an excellent job responding to them, and you responded to them quickly. You walked them through. They had a couple of compliance issues, and I think it got merged maybe less than a day because they were responsive and you were responsive and yeah. just worked through the issues. Hey Daniel, can you can you give the mic to Benjamin? Benjamin, stand up and introduce yourself because you are going to be really the target right. for all the complaints. I'm going to pass the mic over there. Uh, so I'm Benjamin Kabe. I'm a developer advocate at the Linux Foundation. I actually do maintain the documentation with Carlos and yeah, look after, I mean, yeah, first time contributors, like I'm listening <laughs> for sure. Uh, you wanted to? Um, just a quick comment. If, you're, if you are a first time contributor, um, there, the, probably one of the best ways to get your PR in a state where someone will look seriously at it is please just pay attention to the CI because we're a fast moving project and there's there by necessity there's a lot of requirements that we need good commit messages proper subjects in those commit messages the coding standards have to be met and maybe you haven't because you're new to the project you haven't set up all the infrastructure on your local PC to catch these things before you you push that out but pay attention in that first hour after you push out your PR, look at the CI, look what fails, fix that, push that out, and otherwise it, it's, it's just going to give people a reason to ignore your PR, and they're generally quick and easy fix, and there's helpful messages to say what you have to do about that. So definitely just keep your eye in that hour or two after you, you, you make your push uh, out to, to the CI, which catches a lot of these things. And you're not, you're not going to be used to, if you haven't committed to the Linux kernel or something, you might not know the expectations around what the subject line is and the, and, and the sizes. So just um, that's, that's a great way to get your PR in a state where it's more likely to be reviewed if there's not all this low-hanging fruit that people can just, oh, no, not going to look at this because of this particular issue. So watch the CI. Yeah, we have a few questions there, yeah. So. Thank you. I just checked the the, fir the good first issue on on the GitHub, and I see that there are many issues that are two, three, four, five, seven years old. Is there still a sense to work on those? Is it still a good idea to start with those good first issues? That's a very good issue. That's <laughs> actually a perfect question, and I'm going to say yes because if it's still there, it should get knocked out out of the park really fast. And also, just say I'm talking about POSIX on Thursday, and I'm going to have a list of about 21 good first issues that should be doable in a couple of hours. So please, uh, if you're interested in POSIX, very easy stuff. Are, are they marked? Are they marked as? Uh, they will be. They will be. Okay. Uh, good first issue means good first release. No, no, that, <laughs> no, no. That's that's basically means if you are interested in contr into in contributing to Zephyr, and. Yeah, it's something that you can take, like it's a coverity bug or, or if it's, it's something easy. Yeah, I, I don't think that we are following that or like we, we are, you know, the, the, we, we, we are not consistent about this and whatever is marked as good first issue is, is probably stale or old or not relevant anymore because of uh, the backlog. We are talking here about enhancements most likely, yeah, not, not bugs in this case, because you are talking about six, seven years. That, that's, that's like very old. Uh, but yeah, that's actually a very good, uh, is anybody taking minutes? Yeah, no, so, okay, so yeah, uh, we have a recording, yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's something we need, we need to figure out. The good uh, first issue is probably something we need to revive and, and make sure that it's documented and it's, it's also clean up the backlog. Yeah, go ahead. And another good idea is if, if before you start working on an issue in GitHub, if you're not the maintainer of the given subsystem, reach out to that maintainer uh, to see if is this relevant. Uh, do you have any guideline for me for how to address this and how to approach to solving this issue? 
There's a question over there. Are you a runner? Yeah, he's a runner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, I want to uh, tell yeah, something. Can you guys introduce yourself? Can okay. you ask? I'm sure Schettinga. I have collab uh, collaborated with uh, Robert, uh, Robert Lubos on the TCP stack recently, and I have gone through the learning curve myself. And I was fortunate that Robert was patient with me and, and directed me in the right directions in order to make me into someone who can contribute. And to end it a little bit positive, I want to ask the maintainers who is it doing as a, as a day job? maintaining uh, uh, Zephyr. So. <laughs> okay. Among other things. And yes. maybe you can tell something what you like and w especially the ones that are not doing it as a day job, how you combine it. <laughs> um, yeah, I do not do that as, a, as my day job. Uh, well, my, my day job is, is working with Linux, so I have all the interest in having Linux in a way that I feel like it, it's, 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 it's workable with, you know. So I try to, like, split my time between my day job and also some hours of my, well, not many hours of my day doing my maintaining job because I care about, about, about the project, okay? So, like, I want my day job to be easy uh, so I want to, to, my playground to be like uh, up to, 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 to the task and up to, 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 the, to the job. And this is why I care about the project. This is it. Anybody else? Johan, uh, Johan. <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, um, maybe something what I do not like, uh, uh, the new board because I get a notification. And if I have to track uh, bugs or pull requests, if there's something new that it's just for me, unnecessary step to look at the email. Okay. Louder. The new board. Uh, yeah, that's okay. um, what I do not like. Yeah, yeah. Because, board? yeah. The Benjamin board, the welcome board. Yes. Like no. Why? <laughs> <laughs> but you are it's not a new contributor, <coughs> so why do you care? Yeah, because it's more work for me as maintainer to try to catch up with emails because that, that will generate a new email on image. If it's new new issue, yeah, it will generate new email. So it's the second one and the same for pull request. And it's sometimes confusing, yeah, because I, I would open the pull request. like If I had look at the pull request, it's nothing new and the bot is like confusing for me. Yes, why I got a another email yeah is there something new yeah and the, the pull request and I have, that's just the time yeah but I, what's 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 the difference between getting 2000 emails a day and 2005 emails a I, day i no they're not 1000 emails a day well, you can I filter mean, for issues and then it's much <laughs> <laughs> it's much less yeah. so it's yeah so uh, i i part of my day job was lts to your release manager uh, i'll stand over here uh, so I was fortunate enough that Meta was able to give me uh, eight hours a week to do the, the LTS release. Uh, but on the other hand, I also maintain the POSIX, FPGA, and then I contribute to C, contribute to C++, contribute, uh, I manage Thrift now. Uh, I, I do way too much, to be honest, GPIO. <laughs> Gosh, everybody wants to toggle LEDs. We know, we know, we know. Actually, um, uh, we're always looking for help. So I think uh, really in the end, uh, so I feel like um, I do my maintainer stuff after hours, which really cuts into family time and that sort of thing, which is it, it eventually becomes way too much to deal with. So I try to put a cap on that. But um, one of the nice things is uh, actually, I would say uh, before I'm a maintainer, I'm a user and a contributor to Zephyr before I'm a maintainer. So uh, if I need to fix something, I put up a PR, right? And then I get my fellow maintainers to review my PR. Uh, and uh, aside from that, I mean, um, as, as a day job, if something for my day job helps my company, then I will for sure not hesitate. Uh, if, it, if we're not infringing any IP or anything like that, then if it helps my company, I'll make a pull request. Uh, but aside from that, yeah, a lot of after hours stuff. Anyone else?
I think we still have a lot of time. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I think one of the the things I've been a maintainer in the Linux kernel in the, the past. Uh, I've been a maintainer in different parts of Zephyr. Uh, and so forth. And, you know, I think there's a couple different things I see. So one is it's a career opportunity, right? You know, there is, you, you know, you see the number of people at this conference, you see the number of, you know, you, you, you know, we, a number of us have been involved in this project for a long time and have seen it grow uh, through that, you know, just being an open source project and the, the beauty of that I find of an open source project in, um, you know, there's a number of, of uh, people on on the stage or, or up here that they're competitors, right? But we work together on something, and that's really cool. Um, it's cool, you know. I know for a lot of us, you know, after COVID and everything, it's an opportunity to see people. We, you know, you build friendships, um, and that's not unique to being a maintainer, but it's definitely something that that's you know an aspect of uh, you know being part of the project and, and, and things that I've found in my career through, through this and, and a lot of the opportunities uh, I have that is, you know, and I know I've gotten jobs where, you know, because people know and have worked with me in the community, there, there's no like interview process because they already know me, right? It's, it's already, you're already known, you've already been interviewed. People can see the code you've committed and, and contributed. You know, it, it's, it, it's, the best resume possible in a sense. Um, so, yeah, so, so there's a, and, you know, and I know a lot of the, you know, people in here and the, you know, the, a lot of the companies involved are always looking for more people to, to help and contribute um, as, as they grow their products and support for, for what they're doing with Zephyr. Yeah, I mean, I, we, we see that. I, I'm not following this Discord channel in this case, but we have like Hiring and, 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 and I mean, it's always interesting to open this and see that people are really looking from from the project. Uh, you you want to say something? I, there? I was going to repeat basically what Kumar said. I was going to say that I, I, am, I I've been working in open source for a long time, probably 15 years or so, almost more or less often full time. But I was going to repeat basically what Kumar said was. Um, if there's a question, how do you balance this with your day job? Well, I, I initially got involved in Zephyr just because I, I was it, it, it solved some problems I had and it wasn't my day job. But by getting involved and starting to push out code and engage with the community, it became my day job when literally Kumar <laughs> um, hired me in, into his team. So um, it depends what you want professionally, but getting actively involved in open source, particularly a project like Zephyr, can be a great career move. Yeah. Um, it, it gives you a visibility that you might not have somewhere in, in an individual silo. So maybe that starts as, as something evenings and weekends because it scratches the right itch for you, but that's, that can very often lead. If you, if you demonstrate competence, commitment, and you stick around for a while, that can, that can lead to other opportunities. Obviously, there's no promises, but... Um, generally, I think in our field, it's, it's a lot of just word of mouth when it comes to, to recruitment and opportunities. And, and, and projects like this, if you engage, um, can, can, can lead to interesting things. And, and don't be afraid to get involved. I really do think Zephyr, I've worked on a lot of open source projects and with a bunch of different communities. This really is a great community. We're not perfect, but the people are, are generally open, they're helpful, they're, 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 they're willing to sort of put an effort into to, to getting people up to speed. And, and even uh, maybe something like ending up like a maintainer seems crazy to you, but, but don't be afraid of that. In a sense, you don't have to be some super expert in a field. Often um, becoming a maintainer can be as much to your benefit as anybody else. It's not just all hard work. It is hard work sometimes, but it's, it's an amazing opportunity to learn as well. I don't feel like I'm some amazing 32-bit ARM expert, but by, because of taking on that maintainer role, just because there was an absence there and somebody needed to do it, I wouldn't have naturally pointed myself out. But I've learned an enormous amount of things about the ARM architecture, and I've worked with it for 20 years because of having to sort of take on that maintainer role. And, and it can be a great career opportunity too, but and it, don't be afraid that you have to be this, this brilliant person who never makes mistakes and always terrified of, of, of screwing something up in public. We all make mistakes, and in general, this community is, is extremely receptive, I, I think, too, and, and, and open-minded, and that's not a given, and, and yeah. some of us have had bad experiences maybe in other communities, so um, I'm really proud of, of, of yeah. what Zephyr is as a community, and, and I'm, I'm very grateful to sort of be able to work with people with this kind of personality yeah. and technical caliber. So do we have Laos? Or that was that? long, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is there a question there? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Sure. Let's... Hi, I'm Juliana. I'm a 
contributing to, to Zephyr. Uh, I have a question regarding the repos. Why do we have so many repos in uh, Zephyr? Uh, I, will, uh, I, will, I will give uh, an example. Uh, uh, recently, I'm working on uh, OpenAMP and LibMetal, and I'm, I was asking, uh, I was wondering, why do we have a repo for OpenAMP in Zephyr? Why don't we, why don't we get the, the one from GitHub directly? This is just an example. I know there are others. For the Hulls, I understand. <laughs> they are related with the film, but others, I don't get it. <laughs> Maybe I'm missing something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll <laughs> So, uh, okay, so the, the, the answer is for uh, just to make sure that in the future you can always go back in time and check out any version of Zephyr. If we put in our uh, manifest, if we point directly to uh, openamp slash libmetal, what happens if in two years down the line that repo is deleted by whoever maintains it now? So that means that you could not go back in time and update because that, that would fail, right? You could not go and, and check out Zephyr, I, I don't know, 2.7, let's put it that way, or 2.8. So that is the reason. That is the, the, the main reason. That's for open source projects that we fork into the, that, 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 well, that's one reason, actually. The other reason is that in, uh, maybe not the case for open AMP and Metal, Carlo probably knows, but in many other cases, we have patches on top of that because not all the changes that we need in order for that open source project to work well with Zephyr can be upstreamed. Not always, anyway. Especially there's the factor that when you have a Zephyr module, you need to, you, you know you need that Zephyr slash module.yaml, right? And that file, not all maintainers of other open source projects are receptive, are willing to take that in. So, so in some cases, we have no other choice but to fork it. But even if they take it, even if we have zero patches on top of the fork, the reason, the ultimate reason is just to preserve it. <laughs> sure, <yeah. laughs> that it's 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 not about deleting. It it it's not about deleting. I mean, there, I mean, it happens a lot that somebody pushes something wrong. All of a sudden, your history is 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 bad, and then the commit we are pointing to is is a, well. yeah, yeah, deleting happens as well, but it's not limited to that. Yeah, yeah. But I want to answer the. I want actually to address the first question, which is the how how come we have so many repos? Because we had this discussion today. And uh, guys, uh, we we had we had this discussion today, and since we are all traveling, and you know sometimes you know you 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 have to check something out, you have to fix a bug, and you are in a hotel room, with three other, three thousand other people trying to download something. Good luck with that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is this is this is in my opinion, uh, especially. You know, for me, I mean, it never made a difference because I, I'm, you know, involved in so many things. So it's trying to pick and choose which module, etc. That will just not work, right? Uh, but I understand that if somebody's interested, like in a with in, in one vendor, you know, and and I don't, I, I am doing Extensa, whatever, or I'm doing ARM with NXP or with ST Micro. And nothing else. I always built for this same board. I don't have to go download every other hell. I don't have to go download every other, you know, third-party library like OpenThread or TensorFlow or whatever. I mean, this we need as a project. We need to find a solution for fixing this problem. And and this keeps coming up. This keeps coming up, and we definitely, yeah. And I actually, I was because I was waiting like at least two hours. Tonight, yeah, yeah, tonight at 2 a.m. waiting for something to download to, at 2 a.m. even. Yeah. I just wanted to... <laughs> and oh, uh, yeah, we, we, need, we need to deal with that. Go I just ahead. wanted to quickly uh, mention that we have two new maintainers that walked in. So I'm going to let this gentleman ask this question who's been waiting patiently. And then maybe we can get the two additional maintainers to introduce themselves. Okay. Thank you. So I'm Mark from Espressif. The um, um, question is, uh, what general rules or um, approach would you suggest to vendors to speed up and or smoothen the development to mainline or the, to vanilla the Zephyr, avoiding fork like Nordic does? Okay. 
Okay. Uh, thank you, guys. My, my name is Rodrigo. I'm from Brazil, and I'm maintainer of Zbus. I was talking about that on, in the other room there. Sorry for delay, but I'm here, and it, it's a pleasure to be here. See yeah. you and see the faces. Yeah. Yeah. Because just names. <laughs> There's Marty. Yeah. Uh, hi, my name is Marty Bolivar. Uh, I maintain Device Tree and West. Uh, glad to be here. So, uh, do you want to address yeah, this? Yeah. yeah. So, in in general, so the, if, if I understand correctly, just not if that you you asked what what the, the, the advice not to have to fork, right? To yeah. Increase, sorry, increase what? Oh, okay, okay, right, right, right. Okay, I see, I see, I see. Right. Uh, so the, the the answer to, to to that is get involved more with it. The more people you have involved, the more maintainers, the more influence you have in the project, directly and directly. And, and influence basically is, is is achieved through contributions in this project and in most yeah. you know, reasonable projects. So um, uh, that that would be my direct answer: is get more involved in the project. Obviously, that's not always possible because that requires manpower, uh, requires hours of engineering, right? But that's really the the answer. If, if it, the, 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 the story about having a fork or, an, or not another fork is a bit different. I talked about that in my, in my talk today, is that the reason for having a fork is not always that you need to, to, to have changes that are not present upstream. You need to make change. Sometimes you just need them fast. And uh, you can't wait for the review process to complete in upstream. You have to ship your own uh, SDK or your own fork of Zephyr. And that's why you basically take them from the review process, take those changes, cherry pick them into your own fork, ship them, and then later you finish the review and, you know, update the fork. But in. How, how do you how do you actually maintain or guarantee that it's going to be uh, You don't. Reviewed. So I got this yeah. question exactly today. Usually, yeah. so we, we are very careful with that. So we, we, we tend to do this. If it's a small fix that we know it's yeah. almost certainly going to go in, no problem. You just cherry pick it and wait. If it's a substantial new uh, contribution, subsystem, API, that it's unsure, then we, we, we try our best not to ship it until, there's, until the PR upstream has reached the maturity point that we... That make us confident that will not be rewritten. That's the answer. That's the only way we, we've dealt with this so far, mostly. Uh, I know Espresso is uh, kind of an exception because you're already quite huge. Uh, but for other companies who you know might not be doing Bluetooth or something like that, the best solution is a module. Uh, inside of a module, you can create your own uh, driver tree, your own includes, your own CMake extensions your own um, SOCs, boards, literally everything, and it mirrors the directory structure that is in the Zephyr source tree. Uh, so, uh, and there are a couple of integration methods for that that are available online, but that is by far the best vehicle to scale your Zephyr code is the Zephyr module, uh, because you can maintain that on your own uh, Git server internally if you like. Uh, it doesn't actually even have to be Git, if you want to know the truth. But that is by far the best solution for smaller uh, uh, organizations. So I think one thing for like hardware vendors and so forth is, you know, and it's true for mo I think most things really. But trying to keep, you know, PRs and changes. So like if there's a new SOC, you're adding support for, right? Having that change be as minimal. As, as necessary as the first I item. So I know, I, I know I probably commented myself a number of times on PRs, and, and it's I don't know if we've documented this well. We probably don't somewhere, but you know where a vendor will come in and they'll contribute you know ten different drivers that are not necessary to just like get Hello World working on the board, right? So it's like you know the base SOC code, maybe it's a UART, some GPIO pin, and the board, and and so that way it's it's again that idea of the smaller you can make that first PR, the quicker it's going to get reviewed and accepted. And then also because otherwise the, the bigger it is, you know, then it's like, okay, these other subsystem maintainers have to review it, right? So there's, there's a number of things there where, where, you know, as new SOCs and, and boards are getting supported, trying to keep that uh, as small as that minimal, you know, PR as possible. Um, because then it's a lot easier for the maintainers to review, quicker to get in and so forth. 
And then I think kind of things are like on house and so forth is, you know, uh, trying to keep, you know, sort of see how, uh, you know, other vendors have done things, you know, how, um, uh, you know, how the driver models that we have are functioning. And if, if something is, you know, you know, if it's like a big, uh, impedance mismatch, then that's going to be a, a quandary, right? Because it's like, hey, we've obviously supported, I don't know how many SOC architectures and vendors and, and so forth with the various driver models for at least the base, you know, the base typical, you know, UARTs and SPIs and I squared C's and so forth. So, so we know that that the driver models there are highly flexible and, and can support a lot of hardware. So if you come in and for some reason, the way your HAL is or so forth doesn't conform, we're not likely to be, you know, highly conducive to wanting to change what, what we've been doing and, and has shown to work for the vast majority of everybody else, right? So that's something that you kind of have to recognize. You're, you're the exception as opposed, you know, coming in as, you know, in, in that case. Okay, so I, I think thinking about it a little bit, and uh, looking at Nordic and Espressive, I mean, probably that's an exception to many other vendors because you are providing more than just a HAL and SOC support. It's more of an ecosystem or, or SDK in your case. In your case, probably as well, you know, with, with, with you know, more than just, you know, give me the basic to run board. We have Wi-Fi, BLE, you know, all of this, you know, so, and that's where it becomes tricky. I don't, I don't think you need to fork anything for, for supporting the basic hardware. It's more about integration uh, and, and support like for, you know, bootloader. How do I use the MCU boot? How do I integrate Wi-Fi? How, I mean, a lot of things that would probably need a lot of interaction with different areas to get it all done in, in the project. And so, some of these areas, and that, that's actually where it's become tricky and, and goes, goes back to what Kumar has said. I mean, whatever, th there will be things that will be very specific to you or to a specific vendor that it's not really interesting for the project or it's not generic enough to be added to the project. And this is like the type of thing broadly that we, you need or we need to figure out how you maintain that out of the project. I mean, if there's a case, probably by providing like the necessary hooks in the project and then you have that as an extension, right? But that's, I think there is no escape uh, in this case because you are going to have something unique. That's how you are going to be selling products. And that's how, you know, you differentiate from others and that can't can't always be in Zephyr. So either a fork or figure out a way how to build that on top of Zephyr using some extensions that and, and, and that's how you can go into the Zephyr project and, and propose something that would allow you to implement something like that outside without forking basically. Yeah. <laughs> this question has two viewpoints, a user perspective and a vendor perspective. And what's good for vendor, it's not always good for users, right? <laughs> so that's yeah. what I had. Just, I wanted to add one last thing to that, and that is uh, forking and changing Zephyr in tree is by definition technical debt. And uh, a module allows you to avoid that technical debt up front. Otherwise, you can end up paying for that later with interest and the interest accumulates. That's just my thought there. Okay, so my name is Florian and uh, I have been contributing quite a bit over the last months and I first have to say that, is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, positively, as, as yours also said it, uh, I think I have done a lot of work on different uh, open source projects, but it has never been so fast to get so much in uh, as in Zephyr. So very, thank you very much. I have to name Robert Lugos as well. He did a great <laughs> job there. Yeah, really. A badge. Uh, but also <laughs> others. I mean, Chris, who is, where is he as well? So I got really a lot of support, really. Um, but as a bypass, as somebody coming really from the outside, as not being linked to any vendor, of course, I'm also seeing some first-time things that you only see when you enter a project. 
Um, and one thing that it came up and it's, it fits well is we do have, especially in the wireless area, some APIs that make it hard for first comers to, not first comers like me, but vendors um, to provide their own stack because maybe the APIs are not uh, easy for others to implement. And that's especially in the BLE and uh, uh, open thread area. So that is one thing that I think could be easier, not as meaning that it has to be um, different from what we have now, but it should be, it would be great if we had a second option, a low level option, how you get into this as a new vendor with the option to do more exactly in the way that you propose to do small changes first. It's hard if you want to do open thread support right now. Yeah. And another thing, I started my open source career with Debian and they have a very elaborate uh, missing in action process, right? <laughs> so it would be nice uh, as somebody who would it, it, it's, you need a job board if you want uh, contributors, right? You need something like uh, a, a, another state of your maintainership, which is orphaned. So somebody coming from the outside could just look and say, oh, look, it's orphaned. I can apply for that job because I, for example, wouldn't know where to start, right? Um, yeah, and then one last thing, um, very related to the first point. Um, I think this is because it comes over as if it was a problem to have that close vendor support, but I think it's exactly the reason why I got so much support because I think many other open source projects, if you ask how many maintainers do this as a day job, you won't get so many hands, right? Um, so it's a big advantage uh, on the one hand, but on the other hand, I think if the same person is doing the contrib or the same vendor is doing the contribution and reviewing it, then you're not having a 4i principle anymore. And there are areas you said, okay, it's good if you have many maintainers in there because you have a lot of power, but that power can also be abused. Um, and there is a certain, I, I think it would be a good idea to have a 4i principle in the sense of we want to really be sure that what our APIs at least, not the drivers, et cetera, that's low level stuff, but the APIs should be reviewed by when there are changes to public APIs exactly in the manner that you said, how oh, it should be useful for the project and not just uh, to, because it, yeah. as a vendor, you have a lot of management pressure behind. And I see there's also some divide between the technical people who would love to have it better and the pressure that comes to get it uh, out on the market. So my full understanding for that. But yeah, that, no, that's actually a very, very good input. Uh, I mean, this is, these are, I mean, the things that you mentioned here, Things that we have been thinking about, I, I personally have been, like the, the four, the four I principle, right? It's definitely something we need to look at enforcing in the project right now, yeah? Because uh, I feel that it is right now, at least in the Zephyr project, it's very easy. And, and that doesn't have to be intentional, you know, in terms of, uh, I mean, you know, the batch is submitted by me reviewed by somebody who sits next to me. That's not the case. I have been working remotely for 20 years, yeah, but uh, you know, you know what I mean? And then merged by me, you know, and, and that it's, th that just doesn't make sense. Right. I mean, we need, we need to figure out a way how to avoid this. Yeah. So we have areas with maintainers or, or and collaborators just from one vendor. So basically you, you get basically the maintainer approving a contribution by someone from the same and, and that can and, and merged by the same, you know, somebody from the same vendor that again, it doesn't have to be ill uh, or how do you call it bad intention or anything like that. But a lot of the, there has to be a review process for that. So that's actually a very good point. The other one, uh, you, you had another two good points there that... How do we know what roles are open? Oh, missing an action. Missing an action, I like that very much. Yeah, because I didn't like orphaned. Because <laughs> when you put orphaned, that means it, this thing, nobody cares about that in terms or it's, it's, it's not functioning. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And missing an action makes actually, like, we need to think about that as well, yeah. So, so I, I think we have this and we need to clean it up some to kind of what Anna said. And, and I, it's probably not published well, but I think in the maintainer's file, we do have a state that is orphaned today. It's called mis or uh, miscellaneous or whatever. Yeah, uh, yeah I don't. Yeah, we so, removed the orphan. Okay, but, but we do need to be better about sort of 
you know, making it clear, you know, so obviously there's been different things, you know, whether it's like the, you know, we mentioned earlier, the, you know, first time or new first time issue or whatever we called it, you know, so there's things where we've tried to over time. And, you know, again, it's, it's the amount of bandwidth for everybody to work on these different things and, and try. So, um, but it is something we, we should definitely work on, on, on that side. Um, there were two, two other things I, I wanted to mention. So one was just real quick on the previous comment. Um, one other thing I was going to mention is uh, as vendors come with their code, one of the things that the project has been very clear about um, is license, right? And so if you are bringing a repository that isn't an OSI approved license or as not, you know, that has mixed licenses, it's fine that they're mixed OSI licenses, but that is going to be a non-starter for the project. So that is another thing just for a how vendors who maybe want to contribute uh, to Zephyr if they're wanting to maintain sort of a, a how layer or so forth. If that how um, isn't, you know, one of those licenses that, that's a standard license, that, that's a non-starter for the project. Or, and, and not, yeah, yeah. So, and, and non-copy left because obviously the base license for Zephyr being Apache. So um, just wanted to add that just you know, it came thought came up. I think the other sort of thing that, and and maybe to kind of clarify, which is, I think it is a fair point that for, there are probably uh, hardware abstractions in Zephyr for for devices that are more complicated. And Carl's going to probably talk better to to Bluetooth, wireless, um, where we need more vendors to come in to help. You know, maybe adjust where that line is because for those type of devices, they they are more complicated, and and we need just, you know, you, like anything, having more voices, seeing like, hey, this is where this hardware vendor is, this is where this hardware vendor is, you know, so, so we can better create the right abstractions or, or improve them. Um, and so some cases it's going to be a bigger effort, right? So some devices, I think we, you know, a UART, you know, we kind of understand and so forth, right? But there may be others that are, that are more complicated that we do need more voices to help improve where those lines are, so. Actually, just directly related to that so i know which i think you i know which pr you are alluding to sort of and uh uh yes we know and uh we had a meeting about that internally but you have to you have to bear in mind we integrated open thread with Zephyr a long time ago using the 15.4 api from we've you've been improving that uh, over time and then the changes you're proposing are substantial so yeah so we need we need time to digest second yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, uh, just, just to know that, you know, there is no mm, vested interest uh, nowhere here from the maintainer or anywhere to block or prevent you from. It's just, it takes time to find the, the solution and, you know, we are working on it. Thank you. <laughs> we try to, at least. Yeah. I also just wanted to mention, in terms of the maintainer's file, uh, if you see a line that says, uh, uh, odd fixes. That means we need a maintainer for that area. And I don't know if there's a hard limit, but nominally we should have three collaborators per area. You can uh, 20 available, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you can have as many as you want. And the more people that are collaborators, the more uh, reviewers we have, which means PRs get merged faster. And, and, and so. And it goes to the kind of the four eyes thing, right? Yes, so that yeah. way, absolutely. Right? The, the same person who's maybe adding code isn't the one reviewing it because there are more people. Yeah to review it in those cases where there's a maintainer. Okay, since uh, since we are approaching, like, I mean, that has been actually very helpful, yeah. I, I mean, let's, uh, you know, be a little bit productive, get results out of that. There, ha there have been actually a few very good suggestions that I think we need to take, like, to the different forums to, like, the four eyes. Let's, let's make that official, yeah, because I, I really don't like the fact that it is happening uh, uh, in, in, in front of our eyes. It, it happens all the time and you can, we, we, we don't have any way to, to prevent that. Yeah? Again, this is not something that is done being in, intentionally, but a lot of things can go wrong if it happens this way. Uh, so there are a few things, the missing in action, fixing the maintainer file, and so on and so on. So I'll try to, to write this down and we'll take it to the right forums. But this has been a very good discussion. Are there any anything else fr from the maintainer themselves or from you guys here, the audience, that you think 
this is like really like the, the make it or break it type of thing that we uh, to have we, we have to change to, to 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 stay successful as a project and to stay healthy as a project beside uh, I mean, additional things that you think we need to improve in general to make to make it the, the developer experience better and as a project also to move forward uh, and not stagnate on, on on because of these issues yeah go ahead hi um hello I'm Ken Miller. Um, I'm uh, relatively new to Zephyr. I've uh, been using it since around January. So maybe uh, here's some feedback from me just sort of as a user and then contributor uh, perspective. So I initially started this to build a small uh, ultra low power device um, as a sort of add on smart metering solution. And um, so I, I came into it and one of the decisions I made to choose Jeff as a Zephyr was the documentation. And uh, of course the code, the code quality I came from an embedded Linux background, so um, a lot of the stuff made just made sense to me reading the code and you know stuff like device tree, and um, so I'm really appreciative about the documentation. And um, however, there are, of course can be things that can be improved. So um, the first step for me was I'm looking, okay, this SOC is applicable to my my use case. Uh, what is Zephyr, you know, how, how is Zephyr support this? Like, oh, and you have the list of, of supported peripherals and it's like, oh, it does ADC, it does um, sub gigahertz radio, it does, you know, everything I need, SPI squared C. But um, then you start working with it and you notice there's these, these, little, these little, little gaps that are missing, such as um, uh, one thing for me recently is I'm using the STM32 platform. I have some, some PRs that have been merged for STM32 WL and um, uh, things like low power management, of course. So uh, I look at the device tree. The first assessment is, oh, we have stop one, stop two, uh, stop zero through two mode support, and there's a sample for um, for standby and, and shutdown stuff specifically on this platform. And I, I love the samples, by the way. It's fantastic. It's it's for me as a new user one of the best ways to get started in understanding how a subsystem, how a driver works. Um, really good stuff, um, but uh, then, then diving into the lower end stuff, I noticed, oh, um, I'm trying to use stop two mode, now I get deadlocking when I'm doing that with, uh, with the ADC or with SBI for the sub gigahertz radio on this specific platform. And uh, so I've been sort of, you know, spiraling in this vortex of, okay, I'm gonna fix this now. And um, I have a PR currently for uh, the uh, STM32 um, peripheral reinitialization, um, uh, sort of on the going, I'm trying to collaborate with Flavio Flavio, uh, but I, I think he's in the different, uh, he has a different talk right now. Um, anyway, so uh, maybe maybe something, I think in an ideal perspective uh, would be, or ideal solution in the end would be you have some sort of do uh, documentation or template auto-generated from device tree that you can then use to uh, sort of give uh, the developer, or at least the vendor in this case, a template which they can expand and sort of, you know, check boxes saying, okay, I squared C uh, works with all these low power modes or you know, other little details like the, the UART, for instance, on STM32. STM32 has a general UART driver, but uh, there's, there's some little bits and pieces missing there, such as um, nine bit database, like very specific low end stuff, right? That, you know, obviously most people won't care about, but if you're, um, you're a developer trying to implement something very specific, you come in, you don't realize this until the end and you're you know, knee deep in the code, and you're like, oh, I need this support, so I guess I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna write it and add a PR for it, which is, is good for the project. I like doing that, and it's been awesome collaborating so far. Um, but um, it's just unfortunate that you have to learn this after the fact, that you know, when you're, you started adapting the project. Sorry, yeah. I was just gonna, I, I would just for sure wanted to mention a driver-specific test suite. So uh, I squared C, for example, there's the driver, uh, test drivers I squared C test suite. Uh, I want to take a stab at this. Um, yes, so indeed, this is uh, something that's not easy to um, um, to document, uh, and uh, often we get uh, we get uh, questions from uh, from users on Discord. Uh, hey, is that supported? And is this feature supported on on this part? On this part? On this part? And uh, because obviously. Uh, we Features are developed uh, steps by steps, and uh, it's uh, so we're taking contributions that sometimes add a, a new feature. But uh, so it will bring the feature uh, uh, in the first step, and, uh, and so this is great. But the, the feature is not completed, and uh, and so. In the end, we we the the, the status is something uh, uneven. Uh, uh, that can appear unfinished and complete. Um, 
but this is the way it is progressing. Hopefully, uh, years after years, uh, the picture the picture is uh, is better and better. But there are new gaps appearing, and um, and yes, uh, it's difficult to uh, to to so this has to be documented. This has to be clear to users. Uh, what is the current status on uh, such features and such socks and so on? And I don't have quite uh, a good way to uh, on how to um, uh, how to display that, how to uh, to document that. Um, so yes, this is a good point. Uh, this is a part of the documentation that we need to to improve. Um, so we have a part of further about documentation, I think, uh, uh, on Tuesday. So hopefully this is. Uh, uh, this is a good point to discuss. Okay. Yeah, it's hard to come up with a list of features that don't work because we don't know that they don't work. Uh, but if you find an option driver and some specific feature is either not implemented or doesn't work, if you're under the impression that the driver is maintained, especially by the vendor, probably the best thing to do is open an issue and ask uh, uh, how to implement it or if you can implement it yourself. But yeah, it's a, it's a big problem. But it, it's part of what you have to do for using something very specific on a, on a real-time OS that tries to cover as much as possible from a broad number of different microcontrollers from different vendors. Like the, 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 we, we can only implement the minimum stuff for everything and then try to expand on the specific platform as needed. Yeah. Yeah, it, but it's not necessarily intentional that some feature are missing. It's just that, yeah, no one needed it. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay. So, any? Okay, we have a question. Yeah. It's the last question. Yeah. Yeah. L last one. <laughs> 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 yeah, <exactly. laughs> oh, Martino from Arduino, and I wanted to ask you one thing, one single thing about the Discord thing. Uh, <laughs> I have a, a quite of an experience in open source communities and stuff, and one of the things that still works is just searching on Google for your issue and finding it, and Discord makes this thing impossible. And this is yeah. a big issue in we, we saw it in our community, and uh, I strongly <laughs> suggest uh, uh, that uh, you, I don't know, gather some ideas uh, on how to mirror it uh, somewhere, uh, or uh, because this information cannot get lost uh, uh, this easily. And I don't know if you thought about this, uh, and it's not just about the fact that uh, it's uh, fast communication, it's very nice, uh, it's also very overwhelming, and the inf yep. the uh, quality of the information is much less than <laughs> it used to be on forums and things that are meant to stay there. And on the other end, the, the, it gets lost. Uh, it's unsearchable. And I completely agree. And, and by the way, before Discord, we used Slack without archives. So at least we have some history. Before that, we didn't have history at all, right? And I think we need as at least as maintainers or the people actually who uh, are responsible or like you know uh, uh, always you know review, uh, monitoring some of the chats that if a question comes the first thing is is there an issue did you file an issue or open an issue yeah instead of having logs and 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 you know and and things that get lost and not because actually this is what, what you just said i mean i was thinking about it Last night, while I was, I was doing my presentation this morning, uh, I was searching for something that I remember from the history. And I searched something, and seven years ago, an issue was opened. And I was able to go there and fill a slide from this content, right? I mean, this is, this is, I mean, this is really the power of, of, of search, yeah? Whether Google or something else, right? So I think you, you are raising a very good point is that we need to start pointing instead of having the bug resolved or the issue resolved in github uh, sorry in discord or in a chat it really we need to encourage people to go open issues yeah so I have two comments to this. Uh, the first thing is that typically what we do we treat i mean at least yeah all this question 
we treat this code as volatile and GitHub issues as permanent, typically. And GitHub issues are indexed uh, by Google, by Chrome. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but still, uh, so, so in some case, what I've done in the past sometimes is to link to a Discord conversation, but that's okay because I link it from a, from a Google, uh, sorry, from a GitHub issue, meaning that you will be able to get there. Uh, then there's a tool that was, I think, brought up by someone, um, Answer Overflow, uh, that links or that makes the Discord history searchable by Google. So that's another thing that uh, I think we can look in the thing. I'm not sure you, like, you Yeah, but it's not as convenient. I mean, I mean, there's a difference between oh, searching and getting the yeah. results and then going. So I, I think we need to discuss kind of in the yeah. process, maybe, you know, how we deal with some of this and, and, and things that maybe shift to issues, shift to the get discussions. discussions. Get discussions, yeah. And, and and start trying to enforce that behavior, you know, by the maintainers in Discord and so forth and say, hey, mo please move this over here. So, that so discussions, I would say, I mean, it's, it's, it's actually, it's, it's going to be the same. It's a discussion. It's not an issue, but at least it's archived and it's not real time. And it's going to be, uh, uh, your, your discussion is not going to be, uh, there is no interference with others asking questions and then you have no idea who's, who's having the problem because you are using one, one channel for this, right? Okay, so two minutes, yeah, exactly. So, uh, sorry? Yeah, but, but we can't resolve it right now. Yeah, I mean, no, and, and there, is, there is a process for becoming a maintainer. Yeah, so we, we need to. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Oh, okay, I have this one, yeah. So, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, I think we had lo lots of good feedback, very good discussion. We are definitely going to go back and, and try to address some of the issues raised and some of the improvement or proposals. And uh, I think this format actually, I was not sure how it's going to work, but it's actually working really well. We need to do with more mics. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or, or have a few uh, Fabios running around. <laughs> Yeah, it's no, it's great. So thank you again, everyone. We are still obviously here. So if you still have questions, there is the Zephyr booth. You can go ask the questions there and Brett will tell you exactly or notify the people, arrange a meeting or whatever. Yeah. And we all have the, I have many of them. So <laughs> you will not miss, I mean, you will not be able to miss me in this case. Anybody who has the Zephyr tag and the maintainer tag, that's easy to identify. So please, yeah, thank you again. Thank you for everyone, yeah.